This is Stuff You Like, you can call me Ursa. I'm kind of sick, but I went to see The Force Awakens on Friday and I thought it was really good and I wanted to talk about it a bit, so we're gonna do that. Here's the non-spoilery portion of the review. It didn't suck and I'm so happy about that. So happy, you guys. It felt like they tried very hard to strike a good balance between these people have never seen Star Wars before and it's going to be their first ever Star Wars experience and, you know, they're gonna go to the cinema and see it and so we have to make it cool and accessible and nice for them and these people have grown up with Star Wars and they think it's the bestest thing in the whole wide world and we can't disappoint them and let them down so we have to give them lots of things which they like about Star Wars but also new stuff because, you know. And walking that tightrope is not particularly easy and I think they did a pretty darn good job job of it. Okay, I've run out of non-spoilery things to say. Spoilers from here on out. Okay, the new people. I love the new people. I love Finn, who seems to be the new butt monkey, which is awesome because he's really funny. And I like Poe, just fine. I mean, I don't have any particularly strong opinions on Poe, but he seems, you know, good and all. Like the jacket. There are all of these quasi-hipster think pieces going around about how Star Wars The Force Awakens is very much like Star Wars A New Hope. But honestly, I don't really mind that. Star Wars, for me, is at its best when it's doing its pure monomyth thing. And so the fact you have Daisy Ridley doing her Rey future quasi-baby Jedi thing is kind of awesome, I think. I said in my review of The Empire Strikes Back that I was going to be kind of upset if they'd broken Han and Leia up for this movie. And they had. But I wasn't as upset about it as I thought. And that's probably because of why they did it, as in the in-universe reason for it. It didn't feel like they'd just sort of done it for the sake of it. It felt like they had a compelling reason for everything in their lives to fall apart and for them to, you know, blindly go back to grasping at whatever it is they think they do best. Their respective levels of success at going back to the thing that they think they're best at varies obviously. It felt a pretty realistic response to a terrible and fantastical situation. Which brings me on to the terrible and fantastical situation, which is Kylo Ren. First of all, did anybody notice that he kind of looks like young Snape? Because my mother leaned over to me in the middle of the film and said, was he in Harry Potter? And I said, I don't think so. But I'm not just imagining this, he really does look like young Snape, right? And he doesn't really look like Leia, and he doesn't really look like Han, and he doesn't look like Luke or Anakin or Padme either. I think they can do a lot with him. I think he's going to be a very interesting villain. I hope he's going to be a very interesting villain. I don't want it to end up in a crappy love triangle, though, you know, it could happen and I could not hate it, I guess. But I find it much more compelling as Leia and Han's son who totally went off the rails than I do as Rey's potential love interest. Mostly because I think Rey and Finn are super cute. And of course we cement the seriousness of the situation by having Kylo Ren kill off Han. But it also cements Kylo Ren as not the villain you're searching for. Because he desperately wants to be Darth Vader but he just kind of sucks at it. He's got no self-control, he is not smart enough to realize how much he's being manipulated. And while there were a lot of really great character moments for all of the new characters, I think one of my favorites for Kylo Ren is when Rey has managed to Jedi mind trick her way out of her cell. And then Kylo Ren comes back in for round two of I will extract the information from your head and finds that she's missing and, you know, throws a teenage tantrum and starts smashing the place up. And there are two stormtroopers outside in the corridor and they're just like, because, you know, they don't know that the prisoner has escaped, they just think he's having another childish temper tantrum. Which he does all the time! But I was fairly convinced that they were going to kill off one of the main three from the original Star Wars movies. But since Luke was missing, you can't really kill him off. And since Leia was behind the scenes doing the whole General Organa thing, you can't really kill her off without, you know, more effort. And since Rey and Han Solo had been bonding, I figured, yeah, he's totally dead. And so it proved to be. And I didn't mind this because quite honestly Han was always my least favourite out of the main three. Which isn't to say I don't like him, I really do, I just like the other two better. And of course it feels right in the context of the story too because Han is the closest thing that Rey gets to a mentor type figure. And so obviously you have to kill him off in the first movie so that she has a, you know, reason to do things. Gotta move that plot forward for the sequels. Especially given how untrusting she is at the start and then she's just kind of learning to trust people and she kind of starts with Han and then wham. Other random things I liked? BB-8 is adorable. That ginger general guy had the most perfect imperial haircut. I mean truly it was wonderful. Captain Phasma exists and that's cool. I very much doubt they've actually killed her off. And like I said, all of the little kind of character moments 
I mean, a big thing that I find with the prequels is that most of the interactions that the characters had with each other didn't really feel particularly natural, but the newbies, especially in The Force Awakens, were really nice. You felt like they were bonding. You felt like they were friends. You felt like they were, you know, gonna have good relationships with each other, and it was nice. I have to say, the movie did feel kind of long. I mean, the whole sequence with Han and the two groups of investors and, uh, you know, letting the monsters loose on the ship and all of that felt like, kind of like they're setting something up for the future, but it didn't really have to be in this film otherwise. And generally it felt like it would have been a bit better if they could figure out how to make it like half an hour shorter. Then again, I'm currently seven and a half months pregnant, so I'm not quite sure how much of that was just because I really needed the loo for quite a lot of the movie. I would have been really grateful for an interval, but I didn't want to get up and go to the bathroom because then I would miss something. What else, what else, what else? It also felt like something you could show to small children and go, hey, this is Star Wars, and they would go, wow, that's really awesome. I cannot tell you how glad I am about that. They really did go back to their roots in terms of monomyth and force and single Jedi and all of that kind of stuff, and that really, really worked for me. And also, Leia didn't die, and that was awesome. Plus, I really like her new hair. Not the primate butt style she seems to have on the poster, that kind of, you know, quasi crown bread thing. I like that, I'm gonna figure out how to do that. Plus the, and I'm not quite sure if I misread this, but the, the kind of implication that she feels the death of Han through the Force, because there's nobody around giving her a running commentary on it, but she's still like, when it happens. Development of Leia's canonical Force powers. Also brilliant. And Luke Skywalker shows up at the end and it turns out he's been in Ireland all along. No, really, that's where they filmed that. Well, if I were Luke Skywalker and going into exile, I think I would ditch the desert planets for somewhere nice and green as well. I think that's about everything for now. A full and proper review will be coming along once I have the DVD. But uh, if you're on a commenting place, or Twitter or Tumblr, you can leave a message for me and tell me what you thought of The Force Awakens, what you would like to see in my review of it, what you think of the new cast members, what you thought of the development of the old cast members, and what level you're most looking forward to playing in the inevitable LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. In the meantime, one, Merry Christmas or other appropriate seasonal greeting. Two, I'm now on maternity leave, so I may take longer to respond to messages, and also you only get one episode a month, which will be on the second Tuesday. Episode coming up in January is Sister Act. Man, I love Sister Act. Three, if you want to patronize, that's up there, or you can like and share and subscribe and all of that good stuff, and I will see you in the new year. Oh, and four, yes, I promise I will put up a picture of the baby when I actually have it. So until January, happy holidays, and may the force be with you.